Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah, saints of the Most High God. Our God is King. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today that your word is eternal. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word will stand forever, O God. Hallelujah. It will not pass away. We thank you that you have recorded in the scripture of truth, as Gabriel called it, in Daniel chapter 10, I believe verse 22. The scripture of truth you've recorded. The methods, the principles of warfare. Oh God, today, <laughs> we know that you are fighting a good warfare through your church. Through those who are submitted to you. Through those who are walking according to your will and your purpose for our lives, oh God. We bless and praise your holy name. Help us, Father, today with more understanding about your methods, about your reasons for doing the things that you do, oh God. Hallelujah. Give us insight. Open up the word to us. Give us revelation, we ask, oh God. For this day, so the battles that are fought this day, Lord, will be fought according to your will, purpose, and plan. And with your methods... The methods that you have revealed in your Holy Scripture and by your Holy Spirit in our hearts. Hallelujah. Crush every demonic work that would try to hinder that, O oh God. We praise you and worship you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today's message, just marching around. <laughs> just marching around. You think about this. The children of Israel, after they came across the Jordan into the Promised Land, the first city they met was Jericho. And Jericho was a huge city with a big, big wall around. I mean, it was formidable. I mean, it was big. There's, I mean, how in the world are they going to knock that wall down and take that city? It says it was shut up. It was shut up. Mm -hmm. They shut the doors. Or they thought. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was shut up. But here's the deal. God had a plan, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And he began to show Israel, his people, and he wants us to see today. He's, he told them, you be obedient to me. This is the first key right here. In our warfare that we're fighting today against the principalities and powers, obedience, faith, faith. True faith is obedience. You're doing what God says. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And you... God said, just march around the city once every day for six days. Don't say one word. Mm. Now, how hard is that for us <laughs> believers not to say one word? Right? And then blow the trumpet. After you march around the city, blow the trumpet one time. No matter how silly you think it is. Right. Just march around. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, march around seven times, blowing the trumpet. Seven times. And they did that. And then God said, shout. So they did that. And then the walls came down. And the archaeologists, <laughs> archaeologists say that, it was, that they, they, they found those walls. And, and it was like they were pushed straight down into like the ground. Demolition. Right, exactly. Just, just pushed straight down, <laughs> flattened down. Mm. And Israel went right in and took Jericho. Mm -mm -mm. Because God said, just march around the city. And today, Jesus, we know, defeated the forces of darkness. I mean, he defeated the devil, Satan, and all of his hosts by humbling himself. And this is the key. We have to humble ourselves before the Lord. We have learned that um, silence is a big weapon. Amen. A big weapon. Amen. Of the Lord. Amen. And, you know, the onlookers, your enemies or Pharisees or whatever, looking on may say, well, well, they're not doing nothing. They're not saying nothing, you know. Yeah. But yet. God is doing something. But yet you're obeying what God is telling you to do, whether that's to be silent or whatever he's telling you to do. So, therefore, it's going forth in the spirit what God intends to do in that. Amen. And we have seen that silence 
is hugely a weapon. And God, you know, just like with them, he told them certain things to do. They did it. What happened? The walls came tumbling down. Amen. And that's exactly what is happening and will happen in this time we're in right now. Right now. And we're seeing it. Amen. We're absolutely seeing it. You know, and it's awesome. It is awesome. I want to read this, okay? We're going to read this. It says in, in chapter 6 of Joshua, Now Jericho was straightly shut up. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. Mm. They were very much afraid. They were not communicating with the children of Israel. They had no, they didn't send out emissaries and try to make peace with Israel. Okay. Oh, that's good, oh. isn't it? Isn't it? Lord speaking to us. Amen. He is speaking. Mm -mm. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, this is, this is a key right here. I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Okay. Let's stop right there. Okay. Who said that? God. God. Okay, if God says, I'm going to give you this. No, no, he says, I have. I have given I you have this. I have given. Okay, if God says, I have given you this, I've given it into your hand. And I've given the king and the mighty men of valor. Right. What's going to happen? That's, that's done. It's going to happen. That's right. But what, what is it. our, we have to believe it. Right. We have to believe what God says. I have given, like when God says in there in Isaiah, he says, I will bring thy seed from the east and the west mm -hmm. and the north and the south. Believe. Believe. Mm -hmm. Believe it. No matter what we see. Or hear. Or hear. We believe it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. This is awesome. It is. It's absolutely. And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Instructions. Heed the instruction of the Lord. <laughs> right. Thus shalt thou do six days, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. What do you suppose would have happened if they had not <coughs> gone by the instructions God gave them? They would not, it would not have worked. It would not have worked. It would not have been success. When God gives instructions, he tells us to do a certain thing, and he tells us how to do it. Right. And we don't, we, you know, sometimes the reasoning kicks in, and you think, well, uh, I think we ought to do this, blah, blah. But that's not what God said, is it? Right, not, no, no, no. He said silence. Right. a certain thing that he says he to said, do. He said march around. That's right. So if we don't go by his instructions, then the purposes that he is meaning, you know. Or no, I mean, if right, we don't do right, what he says. Right. Amen. Serious. Amen. Very serious. Very serious. I was going to say something. The fact is, is that God wants us to remember that it is not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. So the spirit of instruction, God has given you instruction. Explicit. Explicit in telling you what to do. Right. Then we be obedient to what God is saying. We're going to see the victory in these warfare battles that we're fighting where we're located physically mm -hmm. and in the spiritual realm all around the earth. See, because mm -hmm. we're fighting together with the rest of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because there's foes. There are literal foes who come against God's people, the truth, who, are, who have come out of Babylon, who are walking uh, close to the Lord, surrendered vessels. The religious crowd doesn't like that. And they don't want us to do that. Jealousy. But we, jealousy. Mm -hmm. They're jealous. Mm -hmm. and, and we talked about, talked about that yesterday, about how they want what you have, but they don't want to pay the price right. for it. So if they can't get it, they want to get you out. They want to get rid of you. And try think, to destroy you. Exactly. And make mm -hmm. their self feel better. Right. Make their self feel justified. Like they've rid the earth of uh, a contaminant. Isn't when, that what happened with Jesus? Exactly what happened with, with Jesus. Amen. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly what happened. To the very T. That's, that's what right. Happened exactly. With him. Exactly. And let me read verse 5 here of Joshua 6. And this is so powerful because. I'm so thankful the Lord gave us this message today. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. 
and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests, and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord in blue with the trumpets. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets. And the re-reward came after the ark. The priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. This is so much here I'm seeing it's right here. It's for blowing the, the shofar. It is. There's the, a significance in it. I want to show you this right here. The Lord just showed me this and he, and he quickened to me because in the book of Revelation we have seven churches mentioned, okay? And there's seven priests. Seven is the number for perfection. Uh, seven is a very important number. It's a cardinal number, okay? Seven. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests were kings and priests unto our God, bearing the seven trumpets, okay? The, the word of God, the trumpet, the blast, the, the, the force of the word of God is in the spiritual realm. It is, it is death to the devil. It's mm -hmm. death to the dark side. Hallelujah. See? And as we're obedient to God, as we're walking in obedience and in faith before our Lord and in our Jesus Christ, our Savior, we're walking in obedience. That is actually blowing the shofar. It's blowing the trumpet where... The devil is being defeated. Showing forth the victory before you actually see it with Amen. your eyes. You believe. Right. Amen. Spiritual. That's right. Spiritual. It's like, for instance, young people today. Okay, listen up. And even us in our generation, the baby boomers. When you're tempted to go sin, you submit to God. You submit to God. You remember that shofar blowing. You remember that they just marched around. See, you just submit to God. You say, Lord, I submit to you. I'm being tempted to go do this or that. I submit to you. Then you resist the devil. See, resist the devil. That's the marching around. You just, this is what it is. And, Amen. And, and as you do that, what happens? The devil flees. See, he runs. Yep. He runs. Exactly what's he hides. Now. We've had people even say that, well, what are y'all doing? Well, I don't see you doing anything, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Well, hey, you don't have to see it. Right. God's the one that's doing the work. But we say the and same obey, thing sometimes. Obey. We say that too sometimes, though. We, we wonder, don't we? What are we doing sometimes? <laughs> that's how we feel sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. And what does God say? He says, you don't need to see everything. Right. That's what he says. Because he's doing things through us and through God, his other children. Mm hmm that no one else sees but God. They, we don't see it. They don't see it. God sees it. But he's letting us see right. the evidence of what he's having us do. The evidence of, uh, you know, the silence he's been right, having us do. Right. The right. evidence of the yeah. victory. Mm -hmm. Right. Hallelujah. We see the victory coming. We can see it coming more and more and more. Yeah, because he says, I can do this without you saying a word. That's you just right. obey me. Be in prayer, be before me, right? and I'll do the work. I'll do the work, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Let me talk about Spurgeon for a minute, and Mueller, and, and J.R. Miller, and F.B. Meyer. These were men of God in the middle and late 1800s. And, you know, what did they go through? They experienced things that we experience today. I mean, you know, like, you know what I mean? Being assaulted with doubt, being assaulted with discouragement, being assaulted with things in the walk, you know, as you're going in the walk. Because the devil's always trying to trip us up to make us think about ourselves, and, you know, where am I at in the Lord and all this and blah, blah, blah. You know, when, when God bids us come and rest in him, rest in him. See, these men, when you read the life of Hudson Taylor, he had struggles. He struggled, you know. But he was victorious because he kept seeking the Lord. He kept seeking the Lord. 
And then one of his friends revealed to him from the word. And, he, and the Lord shared the revelation after many years of being a missionary in China. He got the revelation about the rest of faith. Just resting in the Lord and letting the Lord have the victory. That's what this marching around is all about. Resting in the Lord. Just saying, okay, Lord, we believe you. Mm -hmm. Lord, this has never been done before in the history <laughs> of the world. That a, a army could just march around a city. Imagine what they were thinking when they were watching these people right. just marching around. That's all they were doing, marching around every day. And then, you know. and then go back to camp. Yeah, and they were like, what are these people doing? But see, God was moving oh, in the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. And he was already loosening up that wall every time they went around it. It's like when they went around like a million chief princes just <laughs> sat down on that wall. <laughs> and then they went the next day and another million came mm -hmm. on down. Yeah. You know, till it... There were so many, it just pushed that wall straight down, just flat down as a pancake. You know, I think we're in the Jericho time. We Thank are. God's people, we're all in the Jericho time. The Jericho time. Says, oh, that's good. Hey, you go forward and do what I say to do. And, you know, I don't care if it looks silly to you. I don't care if it looks to you like you're not doing a single thing. If you obey me, you're going to see. Right. You're going to see what I'm doing. And really, this isn't about you anyway. It's about me and my glory and getting glory through you. So as long as we obey and do what God says he will do. And, and we're seeing that right now. Amen. We are, Amen. you know, because uh, on the enemy's side, you know, the Pharisees side, you know, they're all bold when they're going around uh, behind the back, aren't they? Right. You know, just like with the Pharisees, did they confront Jesus very much about anything that they were going behind the back doing all this conniving no they didn't uh, did they uh -uh. they were like a, a coward outwardly right they couldn't face jesus really right boldly because they were cowards basically at heart and that's right. why they could go behind the back and do all this stuff blah 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 you know and it's it's true god you know he even showed me that the other day from people that lie mm-hmm they're very bold when they go behind the back where you can't see them or whatever. But when God brings the circumstances where right there in front of your face is that person and God has you confront them, their head goes down. They can't look at you. They're shamed. You know, what are they going to say? You know, and this is exactly what the Pharisees were. This is exactly what this whole thing is, I think, in the Jericho principle. Right. Is that we obey the Lord and God's going to create circumstances. He's going right. to ordain appointments. Amen. He's going to have us in the <clears throat> place where he wants us to be, whether it be a place where he's going to have you minister or a place where he's going to have you confront right. a certain thing. Right. Which is a form of ministry, yeah. exactly right. And it, right. it's you know because the thing is, what does the Bible say? The truth will set you free. Right. Well, if someone is all in their mind got one way of thinking, and they believe it to be true, but when you speak forth that truth, the ab true truth about what Amen. they're doing, right, and it hits them by the Holy Spirit, you know that truth will we'll set them free we'll if they receive free it. Amen. And break that falsity and delusion off Amen. of them. Amen. But you got to speak it forth. Right. For that to happen. Amen. So there's times to be quiet. There's times to speak. Just right. like the Lord says. A time for everything. Right. And as long as we're walking in the Spirit. And we're doing what God says. You know, I... More and more and more, as you're, we're speaking about this, I know that's the time we're all in, Jericho. Right. The Jericho time. Right. Amen. And I believe the Lord's fixing to make the last round. <clears throat> He's making it now. <laughs> and so. Let me let me share this story with you about us because, in 2008, you know, the Lord gave us this motorhome to live in in 2004, and sent us out where we were able to go. When the Lord says go, we're able to just go you know uh to where he wants us to go so we've been various places but in 2008 the lord had me he said i want you it was october i remember i was praying in that little bus i told you all about that i used to go pray in well it was a big school bus old school bus and uh and i went out to the bus one evening and i looked back at the motor home at the rear of the motor home 
and the Lord just put it in my heart to start start praying for your own place, for your own house, for your own place, okay? So I began to pray, and that was 2008. And so I know the Lord is hearing that prayer. I still pray it. And one day he will give us our own place. But in the interim time, again, again amen. But in the interim time, the Lord had us uh, come back to Arkansas in 2010. And we stayed with some friends. We, we parked on their, their property. And uh, they were renting a house. And we, we parked there. And these people were what Sharon was talking about. They were very jealous of Sharon and I. They were jealous of us. For, I mean, there's no reason to be jealous of us. When you're a Christian, you, you receive the brethren, you know, and, and you're walking in truth together. And anyway, they they tried to create the circumstances for us to have a hard, hard time. Mm -hmm. And they were bragging to us about what they were doing, and they were going to move out of the house and all this stuff, like, we're going to have to leave, and I'm sorry you don't have anywhere to go, and all this other stuff. And the Lord spoke to me. He, the Lord said, I have a plan. I said, okay, Lord. And so he revealed what the plan was. <laughs> and so we didn't say one word to these people. Mm -hmm. Not one word about it. We didn't We didn't get mad at them or anything. Remember? Yeah, I remember we were going through that. And, and they kept saying, uh, well, I know this is going to be hard on y'all. I know this is going to make it hard for y'all. And it was all I could do to keep from busting out laughing because I felt... <laughs> I felt, I felt the Lord say, you know, I'm going to do something in this. And we were at total peace. I mean, total, complete peace. And and they kept saying this, you know, I know this is going to make it hard on you because of what we're doing. And I'm thinking, no. But the Lord just had us be totally quiet. Right. Totally quiet. And he Didn't was doing anything. this work. He was doing this work. And, boy, you know what happened? He moved them out. They were doing stuff behind the back and all, just what I got through talking about. You know, people are very bold behind the back. Right. But in front of your face, very cowardly. Right. That's how it works. That's how it works. Hallelujah. With fair, pharisaical people. That's right. Or just evil people, period. Well, what happened was they went to the East Coast. God sent them to the East Coast. You know what we found out later? Let me find that. I'll, I'll read it. Is that God will send your enemies... To the east. To the east sea. To the east sea. And that's, that's exactly where God sent them. That's and right. then God put us in that house. Right. And just miraculously provided. And for three years provided to be in that place. Now I'm telling you. God has shown us over the years about trusting him. Right. Trusting him. Believing him. Knowing that when he says, hey, I'm going to do it. <laughs> He's going to do it, just like right here. Right. He says, I'm going to give this to you. I've, I've given it to you. Okay. Yeah. Well, they didn't see it. You know, maybe even in their mind, they kind of thought, wow, here we are walking around this big old wall. Right. Well, here, here's the <laughs> thing. This is what I was going to say earlier. That's good. God held it back. See, <laughs> keep your point. <clears throat> they were prepared to walk around, just to march around. Mm -hmm. See, God prepared them just to march around mm -hmm. everyone 38 years before that were 20 years and older died in the wilderness so this generation that came in they were prepared to be obedient and wow. to walk around That's god awesome. is preparing us to even be more obedient wow. because god will say to do things that we go, whoa, <laughs> how can I do that, Lord? Mm -hmm. How How is that going to take place? Uh -huh. Well, Lord, you know how I know it's going to take place? Because you said to do it, okay? Right. And when God tells a holy angel, go do this, he has all the resources he needs to do it. Right. Amen? He has absolutely shown us that over the years. And, you know, the fact that he, did you find that scripture? Yeah, here it is right here. God says in, in uh, Joel 2, verse 19 and 20, he says, and 21, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Oh, glory to God. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, 
and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, this is an awesome thing. We're in an awesome, <coughs> exciting time. Oh, and glory just to the because King. it looks like nothing is going on, I mean, God is moving so mightily. Oh, hallelujah. And if we do what he says and obey what he tells us to do, no matter how we think, you know, we can't say, we can't kind of change what he says to us. We can't kind of make it like, well, this would be better. No, that's not obedience. Right. Obedience is doing exactly what he says to do, exactly when he says to do it. Amen. That's Amen. total obedience. Amen. He's got a reason for giving those explicit instructions. Whatever it is, he says. Amen, that's right. And his timing is explicit timing. Because, see, he's the commanding general. Right. Okay. He knows what he wants to right. do, and he knows exactly the timing he wants to do it. So, hey, if the vessel he's talking to is, is trying to get off that, and even a minute nanosecond of a way, it's going to mess up that, what he's doing. That's why he says... It's going to hinder what he hinder, wants to do. I mean, he'll eventually do it, whether right. he does it through another vessel or not. Right, that's right. But that's right. he's wanting us to obey. Right. Hallelujah. And, you know, I think about even right where we are, you know, <laughs> silence can just... Right. Wow, it's doing such a work. It's doing such a work. God himself, and even when the Lord created that circumstance, that he had me confront this woman that's been spreading lies about us, right to her face, and I felt the Lord speaking that this is good. God brought this together because what was said needed to be said to her face. God was saying, I am saying this to your face. Right. And he to did your it. face. And he did it because he loves her. Yes, I mean, and he, he wants, wants her to, to turn right, and right, repent. And, right. you know, this morning I was thinking about that, and I just had this, you know, like a grief in my spirit, and I started praying for this woman that God would grant her repentance. Amen. Because if God doesn't grant the repentance, it's not going to happen. That's right. That's right. And most generally, when God does not grant repentance, that means he's turned a person over to that certain thing or whatever. But we cry out with a... So we continue to we cry, cry out We cry out with a mercy. broken heart. Yeah. We just cry out with, with, with the compassion of Christ. We let Christ intercede through right. us and then watch the miracle. Watch right. the wonderful deliverance that God will, will bring to those whom he is, you know, bringing. I mean... Because he doesn't desire <coughs> the death of the wicked at all. And, you know, it's wicked to lie. Okay, right, right. it's wickedness to lie. It's wickedness to go behind people's back and spread dissension and gossip among and the slander. brethren. Amen. That's wickedness. Amen. That's right. And so it's like, and it's wicked too to to receive it from people. Right. To, when people to are lying about other yes. people or to listen to it. dropping words that will will stain someone's character, yeah. something they heard, so to speak, and it's, and then we sit there and if we receive that. That's wicked as well. Mm -hmm. Instead of cutting that person off right there right. and say, listen, I don't want to hear nothing about so-and-so. Okay. Or tell that person, let's go to so-and-so. Let's go talk to him and see that's if that's the true. Deal. See? If, see, that's the deal. See, we'll go right back to the thing right. about the cowardly deal with that. Because most generally that will not happen. Right. Because, you know, the thing is, if the thing gets exposed, which what happened the other day, the Lord created the circumstances, then the devil's got no more power. <laughs> the behind-the-back, secretive garbage has been blown out of the water, okay? There's no more power that he has in the darkness with that deal right there. It's been exposed in the light. Amen. 
and it won't ever be the same since it has been exposed into the light. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, I mean, we have these circumstances come before us almost every day. Amen. You know, the question is, are we going to obey what the Lord is saying to do so the victory <coughs> can be won and will be won by the Spirit of God, or are we going to try to figure it out our own self? And fix it our own self. Right. And talk about it our own self. And try to make it right our own self. It's not going to happen. That's right. <laughs> it's Amen. just not going to happen. Let's listen to this now. And Joshua, verse 10 of chapter 6 of Joshua, had, command, had commanded the people saying, You shall not shout. Nor make any noise with your voice. Oh, there neither we go. shall you, there you go. neither shall any word proceed out of See, your mouth. This is a great principle this is in the warfare. What Amen. God has been in the us warfare. Do. Amen. Amen. Okay. Until the day that I bid you shout, oh, there then you go. shall ye shout. There you go. See? Oh, glory to God. There you go. What is that, man? That is like strict obedience. Amen. Man. He's even telling you when to open your mouth. And let's go back. Let's go read this right here in 1 John chapter 5. Because this is this is so good. Because sometimes, you know, when we read this word and, and we're, we know God wants us to be obedient, we have this idea, oh, you know, the, the enemy starts trying to attack us. Oh, it's going to be so hard, you know. Oh, lion devil. It's a lion devil. Hallelujah. John says here in verse 2 of chapter 5 of 1 John, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Right. So if you think it's hard, if I think it's hard, oh, I, I don't know if I can do that, Lord. That's like it's grievous. Oh, that's a lie from the devil. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Take that thought captive. Throw it down in Jesus' name. And watch what God will he do. He tries to put that big wall up there. That's it. Yeah. Oh, that big wall. Oh, yeah. The yeah. devil's always trying to build yeah. the wall of untempered mortar. Yeah. False teaching. False right. this. False that. Mm -hmm. Lying and scheming and, right. and trying to trip Try to us up. Trying to put a block up. A wall, right. you know, to block things or whatever. Yeah. But God says, hey. The walls are coming down. Amen, amen. Coming down, Hallelujah. coming down, coming down. Praise God. The walls are coming down. Straight down. Down, down, to down, the down, ground. down, 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 down. God's doing it. <laughs> you know, it's it's like a couple, you know, who've been together a long time. And one spouse is praying for the other spouse, you know. Maybe there's something going on in a marriage, you know, today. And... The one spouse that's praying, like you prayed for me after we first got married, remember? Mm -hmm. I had so much stuff, you know, that needed to be just taken out of me, you know, deliverance. You got on your face and prayed for me. You prayed for me, see? And God wrought the deliverance, didn't mm -hmm. he? See? Never stop praying for your children. Pray, pray, right. pray, pray. Prayer is worship, adoration, communion with our Father, and then being obedient to what he commands and and doing what he says that's just just marching around just marching around we're we're we're, we're, we're in this pilgrim land we're going through we're going through we're not going to stop we're not going to be stuck here forever we're going through Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah praise god we have the victory today man hallelujah now so the ark of the lord verse 11 compassed the city going about it once and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp i mean you know it's just okay lord i'll I'll go to 7-Eleven today. You told me to go. And, and I'm sitting at 7-Eleven. Then the Lord says, go home. Okay, I'll go home. You know. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. Blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them but the re-reward came after the ark of the Lord. The priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they can pass the city once and return into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day. On the seventh day. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We're coming up to the seventh day of the 7,000th year. Hallelujah. We're coming up to that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 
on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout! For the Lord hath given you the city. This is all faith. This is all belief. Joshua working with the captain of the host. Hallelujah. And what does that word shout there mean in the strong? Oh, let me look it up. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Shout. It means uh, breaking. the breaking. breaking. To split the ears. Right, with sound. Alarm. That is shout for alarm or joy. Blow an alarm. Cry. Uh, cry aloud. Cry out. Destroy, make a joyful noise, smart, shout for joy, I, I triumph, saying, hallelujah. I was saying earlier about the blowing of the trumpet, the shofar being powerful, and we know that to be true Amen. in our own life. That's and right. I was thinking about the time when, you know, the Lord has us blow it. It's like a warfare uh Oh, Alarm. when we lived in Oklahoma and yep. those people were over there. I mean, these people were so <laughs> demonic, man. They were like making all this noise and everything. And just you could just hear the demons. Oh, yeah. And we were under attack at the time. And true Christians come under attack by the devil. Uh, whether some Christians believe that or not, that's, that's irrelevant. We know it to be true in our own experience. And I know many people hearing this today know it to be true. But anyway, God told Sharon to blow that, blow the shofar. And so she swung the door open, and she just started blowing, and God actually blew it oh, through he her. Did, I mean, man. it was like, he did. I mean, that's the loudest. I mean, I it was like, <laughs> whoa, man! And as soon as she got through blowing it, it was absolute silence. Total silence. Absolute silence. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just drove out those demonic oh, it forces. Did. They just went. It <laughs> did. It's it, very powerful. It's yeah. a very powerful tool that God uses, and it's the same as our mouth is a very powerful tool oh yeah there's power in the that tongue. god can speak through if we let him hallelujah and it's just powerful to be obedient on every turn he's shown us that big time hallelujah look at verse 17 it says and the and the city shall be accursed even it and all that are therein to the lord only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. She helped. She helped God's people. She was the only one. Right. She was the only one. Because she helped right. the messengers. And her household. Wow. That's and that amazing. ties in with Acts, mm -hmm. you know, where the jailer comes in and he finds Paul and Silas. They're still there. You know, they didn't run out after the earthquake because he was going to kill himself. And he got saved in all of his house. Wow. See? And so God saved Rahab and all of her house. And we know that she was the mother of Boaz, who was the father of Obed, right? The father of Jesse, David's grandfather. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. See, Rahab and Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite and Rahab was a Canaanite. They both were put right into the line of Christ because of God's great mercy. And it was God saying, I'm saving the Gentiles as well, see. It's not just the Israelites from the from Abraham's line. It's going to be the Gentiles. See. The Gentiles from Ham's line. The Gentiles okay, from Japheth's line. Hallelujah. Our God's a mighty God. He gets what he wants. Amen. And he desires uh people that will worship and praise him in mm -hmm. spirit and truth. And that will love him and do as he bids them do. Because as we do what, what God bids us do, we see the enemy forces coming down. Hallelujah. Amen. So God can save the people. Hallelujah. Amen. See? So God can save the people because God loves people. God loves the souls of men. He sent his son to die for the souls of men. Hallelujah. Amen. He doesn't want to destroy people and throw them into hell. But people choose to go to hell they, because they don't choose Christ. He always gives lots of warnings Amen. and lots of chances before that happens. Now, here's another principle. We're going to talk about this. This is something that we must remember in the warfare, okay? Hallelujah. And ye 
Verse 18, Joshua 6, In any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Oh, man. Lest ye make yourselves accursed. Ooh. When ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. Mm. When, when we, as the body of Christ, when, when the body of Christ is walking in obedience, we're victorious. When the body walks in disobedience, what happens? Defeat. Hindering. Right. Stifling. Stopping. You and it, and it, it, affects, it affects the whole body, see? Because we're all members of the body of Christ. We're each one together. We're in Christ. He is the head. So if I mess up, it affects my wife and it affects you. Hallelujah. So I don't want to mess up. So I cry out to God, Lord, keep me in the narrow way. Search my heart. Try me. See, hallelujah. Yeah, it was real important here because they were bringing stuff in from the outside. From the enemy's camp, basically. And, you know, think about what the accursed thing could be. You think maybe the television could be an accursed thing with all the filth on it and all the stuff that comes through it? You think that could be an accursed thing? I think it could be. Yes, it is. And I think it is. Yes. But, hey, do you bring it into your home? Do you watch it hours on end laughing with the world? Or the cinema, even going to the cinema and watching. Yeah, we got to think about this science because science fiction and all that stuff. It's, these things will affect your life. You don't right. think they will? Hey, you're wrong. Totally wrong. Totally deceived if that's what you think. Because it will affect your life. It will. The Lord says, "Come out of her, my people," and that is, "Come out of her. Come out of the world's ways. Come out of what the world sees and looks at and loves and laughs at." Okay, now we shared before about how we both had experiences before we backslid for a long time and came back to the Lord. And back in the 80s, remember Star Wars? Mm -hmm. And how, you know, it was like a big thing, you know. Yeah. And it was a big thing with you and, you know, your son and everything mm -hmm. when he was little, you know. And, mm -hmm. and But Star Wars, the whole thing is based on Zen. See? Yeah. It's based yeah, on it the Force. It's mm -hmm. based on... And, and Christians in America just took it hook line and yeah. sinker because of the 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 spaceships and the and the special effects and today the special effects are even more so they still are the christians still hook line and sinker yep. are sinking their money into star wars into zen into zoroastrianism into the new age okay christians who love jesus who say i love you jesus thank you for saving me now, please excuse me while I go drop $200 down at the at the cinema with my family. My young son here, who's six years old, and my daughter, who's four years old. We're going to go to the movies today, Jesus. So I'll be back later. See? No. God says, don't do that. God says, don't do that. See? Because what you're doing is you're letting in evil forces into yourself and into your children's hearts and minds That's true. that will affect them the rest mm -hmm. of their life. Mm -hmm. See, it's we scary. were all affected by it, saints. We all grew up in a society of much and of the visual, the beast on the image, on the screen, the beast made to live, the, the human flesh being exalted, okay, the fallen nature. We all bought into it at one time or another. And it affected us when we were little. We didn't know it then, though. We didn't know it. And our, even our parents, I mean, they were, you know, after World War II, man, the, the baby boom generation, the 50s, the whole materialism thing, it affected the church big time. But God has a remnant today. Those who are just marching around. And they know their father. And they're learning more about their father. And they're doing what the father says to do. Hallelujah. And it's hard sometimes. It's a battle. I mean, a real battle fiercer than the battles that we see fought on the TV or on, on the newscast. Fiercer than that. But one thing we have that the enemy doesn't have, and that is victory. We Amen. have the victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. That's right. Amen. 
So here Joshua, he tells the people, keep yourself from all the accursed things, lest you make Israel a curse, okay, and trouble it. And then verse 19, oh, but... What is it saying in that? Go ahead. It's saying you bring accursed things in, you can also make trouble... For Israel. For the other. That's right. That's what we were just part saying. Part of the body exactly. of Christ. You bring a cursed stuff into your life, right. into your home, you are also affecting the whole body of Christ when you do that. Right. Let me give an example. of, of a, This is like a, a scenario example, but I know it's come true many times. You get a group of people in a congregation. Let's say there, there's a hundred people in a congregation, or maybe let's just say a say hundred families. And something goes on in the congregation, and it's very, very serious. Very hard thing happened. Maybe a disaster or something happened in a family or whatever. Or something's going on with one member, uh, one group, one family in the congregation. Something's going on in their family. So you get three families come together and pray for that one family. And they really pray. And they come every night. They meet at one house, and they pray. And they seek the Lord. And for seven nights, they pray. And they pray. They're really seeking God, you know. And then God steps in and boom, he delivers and sets free and rectifies the whole situation going on with that other family. Well, you would think the whole church would recognize that and say, you know what? If we come together every night as a whole body of Christians in this building, okay, and really get down and pray and pray about some of these things that we see going on in society, some of these things that we see going on in the body of Christ first, pray for these things. Man, man, God will move mightily. Let's set our heart on God. Let's set our heart on God and really pray. See, because it happens when we pray for each other, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. See, we come together, two or three come together. Jesus is right there in the midst. We pray and, and God moves mightily. Imagine 10 coming together or 20. Mm -hmm. You get in the book of Acts and they were praying after Peter and John were let out of prison, out of jail. They went and they, they prayed and God moved and, and the building was shaking. Hallelujah. See, and they went about turning the world upside down. And that's just because of obedience, because of doing what God said to do. Don't bring their cursed thing in. Oh, hallelujah. Let's heed the word. God said, but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. This is another principle. Mm -hmm. See, all everything of our goods, that everything there. that we have is consecrated unto God. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, and it is. Hallelujah. And they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, when the priest blew the, with the trumpets. Hallelujah. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. Hallelujah. That's awesome. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron put they into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which brought she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Mm. See, and, and there's a principle right there. See, cursed be the man before the Lord that raiseth, that riseth up and buildeth this city. In other words, a movement takes place in the body of Christ and God sees that's not of me. God says, no, 
and so it falls down mm -hmm. okay god knocks it down and then someone else tries to bring that Ooh. same movement back up again uh-uh mm -mm. see god says no yeah. we need to pay attention to what the lord's doing hallelujah amen, amen. praise god there are certain places the lord places it abide upon that's right that have done that very thing trying oh, to man. start it out you know that the Lord wanted to do something in that place, and they refused. Right. Because they wanted their way. Well, right. hey, God gave them their way, but he also put Ichabod across the door right. and left that place. So it's like, it's very serious. It's, it's so detrimental serious, I'm going to say, because uh, God's serious. When he tells us to do something, he is serious about it. And he's saying, don't try to figure out another way but what I've told you. Don't try to to slack up on what I've said to do. Do it. Do it exactly like I've told you to do it. Amen. That's good. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord, saints. Let me blow this shofar. Hallelujah. This is a shofar the Lord gave us, and it's just wonderful. We love it. You know, this, uh, there's a time for blowing the shofar, and we believe now is the time. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have this from the Lord. We know now is the time to blow the shofar because it does something in the spirit realm. It does. When God's men and women blow the shofar, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's not only the physical shofar, it's the spiritual shofar mm -hmm. that God is blowing because he's doing it, okay? And things are happening. Uh, the enemy is being routed. Yes, even if you don't see it, know it to be so. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Because he is being routed. Go ahead. And the thing I found interesting is when you heat the shofar up a little bit. Yeah. It, when you heat it up. Did you hear that? When you heat it up. Yeah. It blows. Louder. Better, louder. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know, I think it's all significant. It because is. Because the heat's being turned up in the world. And, and God's God, ready for it. And God is. Hallelujah. He's got our people prepared <laughs> and being more prepared every day, mm -hmm. see? And we have this tendency to, to think, you know, I have to be prepared. We, yes, we do. We do. But we are prepared for today's battle. God has given us what we need. Hallelujah. It's in Christ. The victory is, Praise is God. here. It's secured. It's here. Hallelujah. We have it. Amen. You say, well, I don't say, we have it. Amen. You say, well, I don't say, well, well, we have it. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord says we have the victory. Glory to God. It is ours. Glory to the King. We claim it. Praise God. No matter what we see, no matter what we hear, we claim it. And I tell you what, the, the Lord is showing us up close and personal this very thing in the very place we are. That you do what I say and watch what I will do. And we're watching it. We are watching him rout on the right and on the left. Our enemies. The Hallelujah. enemies of God. Amen. You know, because the enemies of God are not going to win at all. That's in right. any kind of way, they're Amen, not going to win. Amen, sister. God has the victory. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. And what he says will come to pass is going to come to pass. Glory to the Period. Lord Jesus. That's Hallelujah. It. Period. That's right. Glory to God. He's, I tell you, he's really wanting his children, even though it might look like a dark, just a dark veil in front of you. He's wanting you to know and see in the spiritual realm the victory. The victory. Even though there's no physical side about it, he wants us to know, hey, it's done. Do you believe what I said in the word that it's done, that Amen. it is finished, that the victory is already accomplished? That's Glory what he's God. trying to get Amen. through to us. You know, I, I pray we get it. I pray we all really get it. <laughs> I do. I get it. <laughs> I want to keep it. Right. See, I want to maintain it by prayer and seeking the Lord 
And if we diligently seek him today, we will find him. We will see mighty things. Hallelujah. And we already are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, hallelujah. Thank you today, Lord, for this word. Oh, God, you're so good. I bless your name. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you have given us. Your life. Your purpose, oh God, to transform us into the image of your dear son, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. I thank you for my dear wife, Lord. I bless you for her life, Lord. I thank you for continually making her that woman of God you decide, Lord, you want her to be. Hallelujah, which is how you want her, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. There's always a treasure right here. And you show me more and more each day the, the great treasure that I have and that you've made Sharon, Lord, to be. And I thank you for that. I thank you, God. And I pray, Lord, to be a better husband. And I pray for the husbands out there. They be better husbands to their wives today. And wives be better wives. Hallelujah. For the glory of God. Lord, fight the battles for your people today, Lord. You are doing it. You said in 26 of Isaiah, verse 12, that you do all the work in us and for us. Show us today mighty things, God. Deliver on the right hand and on the left with the weapons of righteousness. Drive out the enemy. Drive out the devil, Lord. And those hindering spirits that try to hinder what you want to do in the life of your church today. The resources you want to bring to your church today. From heaven, spirit, soul, and body. Oh God, touch those who are ailing today, Lord, in their physical bodies. Touch them today, Lord. Quicken their mortal bodies by the spirit that you use the Holy Ghost to raise Jesus from the dead. And Lord, keep us all walking in obedience to you, Lord. Help us to love you and to praise you more and more, even unto the perfect day, O God. And crush the devil under our feet, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. You can write us this ministry here, witness and testimony. Write to behold a new thing. God says, I'm going to do a new thing. Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Behold a new thing at yahoo.com also check out the links on the on this message we have links to our blogs and uh, go there and we have much much word on the internet hallelujah because the lord said put it up there hallelujah for my people so that's why it's there hallelujah because god loves you and we love you god bless you and have a wonderful day in the lord in jesus name amen